What up, it's your boy Dick Incredible Man, and yes, we are back at it again, and I know I'm a lot late, but this is Black Clover episode 160 review, and you know, is the Prince of the Spade Kingdom. Let's get into it. I don't think I do it good, no, I think I do it great. They would do it if they could, they can't do it, so they hate. Everybody wanna look, but nobody wanna play. Stealing eyes. Man, oh man, oh, dude, I've been wanting to talk about this for so long, but, you know, I didn't want to spoil anything for my anime-only watchers, man, and I didn't want to ruin anything for them. I wanted them to be surprised and shocked, and this was a nice episode. Now, the whole first half of this entire episode was purely informative. It was to get the information out there about, you know, being the son of the prince, I mean, of the king and the queen of the Spade Kingdom, and we got a little bit of how... We got to see how he got from the Spade Kingdom to the Clover Kingdom. You know, was a little hesitant to believe what dude was saying. But once he showed him like the mirage and like the official backstory of how his mother and father really loved him, they gave him the magic stone and they gave him his name and like how all of the villagers were happy that the king and queen had a son and, and they all loved Prince Juno and how his father sacrificed his life to save Prince Juno. You know, started to like realize some things, man. But at the same time, he can't just abandon all of the responsibilities that he has as the vice captain of the Golden Dawn of the Clover Kingdom because he got sent here as an infant. So the Clover Kingdom is all he knows. Asta and the father and everybody else in Hage Village and you know everybody in the capital. That's all he knows. This is all you don't know. All he knows is Clover Kingdom. Sure, he is the official prince of the Spade Kingdom and he can help them in the long run, but he can't just jerk his responsibilities of being the vice captain of the Golden Dawn of the Clover Kingdom and all of the people that love him in the Clover Kingdom because that's, that's all he's known his entire life. Sure, all of this other stuff is great and it's very cool to find out this information, but I have responsibilities now, man. I am... I'm, I'm, you know, of the Clover Kingdom, dude. I like all of this other stuff is, is shocking. And, and it makes me think because I always wonder what my parents were like, but I have responsibilities now, man. And all of that took place. It was nice to see all of that stuff in the back half. And we kind of see what happened and what transpired. And we see that nobody trusted the triad trio from, or well, the dark triad from the very beginning when they started to take over or, you know, go out on all these different kinds of missions, we see that, like, nobody trusted these people. Like, you can definitely tell, like, the way that they were just sitting there and relaxing and then finding out that the king told them to, you know, uh, go stop these rebels, and they murdered all of these rebels. And he didn't even tell them to. They just murdered them because they could. Those are warning signs. And sure, they were weary of these people, but nobody never really acted on it. And because they didn't act on it, they grew more powerful. And by the time they decided to act on it, it was too late because these people were gone and they were ready to just murder everybody anyway. But, dude, man, I've been wanting to talk about this for so long. But it was finally good to actually see it on screen and have that take place. But all of the first half of this episode was purely informative and it was it was nice information and especially for those anime only watchers it finally give you gave you guys that that inkling as to well you know has always been special right like like he has all of this super superb uh royalty-esque magic power and like okay this screams signs right so like you finally got your answers to what you were wondering he is royalty, just not of the Clover Kingdom. He's royalty from the Spade Kingdom. But I love this episode. I don't know if anybody else caught it, but the father also asked if Asta is from the Spade Kingdom as well. Like he's like, well, what about Asta? He was found there with you know. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know an Asta, but you know that's a whole other story within itself. But it was nice to have that moment because Asta and Yuno were found together. So the father had to ask, like, if Yuno's past came out. Is Asta's past tied into Yuno's past because they were found together, and I and I like how he put that out in out there for the information to be gathered. But all of that is nothing to the back half of this episode because this back half of this episode we dive straight into the heart and the meat and potatoes and everything and all the goodiness of the Spade Kingdom arc because the Spade Kingdom. Well, not the entire Spade Kingdom, but a few members of the Spade Kingdom and one of the Dark tri Triad Triad members 
has invaded the Spade Kingdom and they're attacking the Golden Dawn because they want Vengeance. And Vengeance is an arcane stage magic user. And we know that because he uses the World Tree magic, which is very powerful. But he's an arcane stage magic user. And they are there for Vengeance. And the thing is, because they have all these, he has these other two flunkies and they obliterate the Golden Dawn. You know, he's on his way there and the dude is trying to stop him. He's like, no, 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 no. I have to go because I am the vice captain of the Golden Dawn. And he gets there, man. And these people, they tried to put up a fight. They really did. But these people were getting mollywop, man, left and right. Sure, these were some of the, I can't even talk today. These were some of the, um, I don't want to say weaker because they're not weaker, but like some of the not as strong members of the Golden Dawn. These were some of the, some of the uh, lower end members of the, like, I hate to say it like that though, man. Like they're high, they're high up, but like they're not as strong as some of the main core members of the Golden Dawn that we've constantly seen throughout this series. Like they're members, but they're not as strong as everyone else. So these people taking them out, sure, it, like it's, it's a little rare because the Golden Dawn is known for it having strong members, but these members aren't as strong as the core members that we constantly see, and they completely get obliterated. But you know, up here, and he sees these people putting in his, put, it molly wiped all these people, man. There's blood, there's there's rubble, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And Vengeance ends up bumping into, um, what's dude's name? I know his name. Oh, man, I can't think of it. But anyway, the other member of the Dark Triad, and they're having a fight, and he uses his bone magic, and that bone magic looks so good, like, because the skeleton bones are, they're moving on their own. And so, like, it's nice. It looks good. But he and Vengeance starting to the fight. Then um, Electora, or Electora, appears and tries to stop him, and this dude just pierces straight through his magic and pierces Electora, or Electora, however you want to say it. But Vengeance gets pissed off, and Vengeance is on the warpath, man. He unleashes uh, World Tree magic, and it grabs some of the bones, and, like, Vengeance is gonna go in, man. You know, like, you know, when you piss Vengeance off, you know, you get that, you get that whole aspect of, you know, okay, oh, this Vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I see why he's the captain, man. But then you know appears, and you know it's pissed, man. You know went into his form, like, the, the Wind Spirit form, and, like, he's gonna get it. He... You, you know, it's for the slay these people, man. Like, you know, it's super pissed. And you can tell the look on his face. And he's going to molly wop these people, man. And in the preview that we kind of see that, like, some of the um, other core members of the Golden Dawn is going to appear at that same time as well. So next week's episode, we're getting a full-fledged fight. And we are diving into the meat and potatoes of the Spade Kingdom arc, man. Let's get it. This is really incredible. Don't forget to smash the like button so you can't smash any more. Comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life, man. Peace out. Today, yeah, I